Welcome back to SDL TV Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and helping women make sound decisions when it comes to divorce is MU Extension's Consumer Economic Specialist, Suzanne Gelman. Uh, welcome back, Suzanne. Thank you. So we were talking in the last segment about about communicating about um, finances and budget before you get married and or when you get married, having separate accounts, having credit cards and bank accounts in your own name, and a lot of women don't follow this practice or they let it slide. Yeah, and there's not, I mean, you can have joint accounts too. I'm just a proponent just because of what I see being both a financial and legal person, you know, in those fields, that it's really a good idea to have a both. It's a great, do, do joint accounts, you know, commingle some of your stuff, but it's not a bad idea to have an account in your own name and a credit card in your own name. Right, right. So what are some of the, next week you've got a seminar, um, Wednesday night. Yes. And what are some of the topics that are on the seminar and that particularly you have found to be important to women? Well, so although we only have three hours, we try to pack it full. Um, we have we have a discussion about things that you need to do financially to put yourself in the best possible position to whether, you know, to go through the divorce and and recover after. We also talk about emotional issues for women that they need to pro, you know think about in order to recover emotionally from a divorce. We talk about, um, and this is not all me, this is different speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a discussion about helping children cope with divorce. And then the majority of the time is spent with an attorney talking about um, what you need to think about, you know, about divorce, how the Missouri process works in divorce, different ways to get divorced. Um, you know, thinking good, if you haven't hired an, attor an attorney, good questions to ask when mm -hmm. you're hiring an attorney. Uh, just expectations for the process. Mm -hmm. Because I think oftentimes people are surprised. They have no idea, you know, what to expect from the process, how it's going to go. You know, the fact that, you know, Missouri courts tend to have preferences, for example, for joint custody. Um, so. It, you know, so they, just women need to get educated at the beginning and assemble their personal team of people that can help them feel successful and get through this. It's a, it is an emotional time. Yeah, it's actually, I don't think it's a bad idea to act, to have a financial professional somewhere involved to help you figure out, for example, how much do you think you're really going to need to live um, after the divorce, you know, to help you figure out what's reasonable for you. Um, and I don't know that the lawyer, you know, a divorce lawyer is is that person. Mm -hmm. Do you find that divorce lawyers often recommend a financial planner to come on the team to help? So the ones, you know, so I, I don't know all of them. I mean, there's many. Uh, but certainly some of the ones that I've worked with usually do recommend people try to pull in someone financial to help them evaluate you know, what where, they're going to need. Where are women being held up? Or do you find in your experience that women um, don't ha know how to budget, don't have an idea what their expenses will be? Um, I think it's hard um, if you've been married a long time and you've got kids and you've had merged finances to really see, you know, and what if they're not working and they're, you know, and they may need to go back to work. What are they going to need? How long might it take them to find a job? Do they need to get continuing education? I mean, there's a, a lot of considerations. Mm -hmm. And divorce brings change because you're going from one household to two with probably the same amount of money. It so. generally is. That, that's part of it too, is that you're now supporting two households on the same income. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women are, you know, don't think they will, but they're expected to go back to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a big change for a lot of women. Right. So yeah. I, you know, I think it's a, not a great idea to go in with the attitude that, you know, that you're going to be able to have the same lifestyle after a divorce because it's really hard to set up two households on the same income that you used to live on one. Yeah, but it can be done and women who need to be in that situation will thrive once they get through the hurdles and figure out how to do it. I think the better the planning, you know, the better the processing. And that's why we actually offer this is that we, again, we want to help women put themselves in the best possible position. We want them to be able to make rational, you know, reasonable choices from what they learn about, you know, which which way is the best approach for me, for example, to get divorced. You know, I, I think sometimes too, I've heard from women in some of my other, my financial classes, that had they understood 
certain aspects of how the process works and what the pref court preferences are, at least in this area, for things, they wouldn't have spent so much money fighting for certain things that they probably weren't going to win. Mm, interesting. For example. Yeah, so it's great to be educated. So next Wednesday night, wonderful public seminar, um, in three hours packing in the information. <laughs> it's a lot to cover, but at least we'll start to answer some, some questions. Divorce on the Horizon, Considerations for Women, uh, next Wednesday, May 22nd. So thank you, Suzanne, so much for coming. We always love having you, and we learn so much good financial information when you come in. So we'll have you come back in the fall with your, uh, your fall workshops the for Women's Financial sure. Series? Yeah, we definitely love to hear about that. Stay with us here on STL TV Live. We'll be right back.